Hello, class. Welcome back. This is the beginning of the material for this C++ programming class. So, what is a programming language? Let's start from there. Um, a programming language to me is a tool. It's a tool to just like other languages, like Chinese or English or Spanish, it is being used, however, to communicate specifically with computers so that it can solve problems for us. However, uh, a lot of people might not have told you it also can be used to express your, you, yourself artistically. For example, I'm doing, I'm also programming a mobile app and a lot of it is creativity. A lot of it is I decide what I want it to do. So think about it in that way, just like English or Spanish can be used to write a novel or write a poem. Um, so programming is actually very interesting. It can make computers do whatever you want it to do, as long as you, it can do it, right? A simple C++ program looks this way. Um, it's an all famous Hello World program. Every single programming language has to start with this uh, when you learn it. So, but with this seven line of code, can you guess what it will do? If not, well, let's go run the program. It's the easiest way to find out. So let's uh, hit the run button on the right hand side. And you see in the execution tab, it actually say hello world. And that's basically what it does. This seven line of code tell the computer to print out hello world. So let's look at um, this seven line of code again. So let's go back to the slice. Um, this is just a screenshot of what happened. So what I did was um, I was making it easy for you. So I've um, used cpp.sh, which is an online compiler where you can run a single file program. So um, it can be used for a sandbox because you are le just learning a language and so sometimes you don't know the syntax of the, the, um, of the language so well, so you can use it to test out small parts of your program to see if it works. Um, I, I found it very useful. But next week we are going to set up our IDE to be really developing program like a real programmer. But this week we can just use this um, online resources online compiler to compile your programs and see what happens yeah so what happened to the the hollow world program you can see that mainly this line of code the c out um uh, arrow arrow hollow world is what be what's being executed. I mean, of course, all seven lines of code are being executed, but as a programmer, that is the main thing that you have to write to, it's like the meat of the whole program for it to work. But all seven lines are important. So we are going to go into behind the scene and see what it, behind the scene, you know, what was going on. So simply put, that seven lines were translated into something the computer understands and executes. What the computer understands and executes is called the machine language. The, and C++ is actually a high level language because humans can understand it really, you know, sufficiently if we just learn the language. But the machine language, the machine code is just one and zeros. And you don't want to, I'm sure you don't want to look at the one and zeros and try to understand what it means to the computer, yeah? And that's why when we learn programming language, we usually learn either high level language or low level language. But anyways, high level languages are like C, C++, Python, Perl, 
um, like I'm doing a dart um, in um, Swift before um, this bash uh, shell language. Those are just some examples. So before we um, look into the code, I want you to know that behind the scene, this is also what's going on. So the program that the seven lines, yeah, went into a compiler and then it get compiled into object code. Um, but there are something that has been done for you to start with so that just by typing C out, arrow, arrow, you know, what you want to print out, um, the computer knows what to print out. So uh, that part that is, it's not obvious to us is also added um, to, to the program code, the object code, and then linked together by the linker. And then it became the machine language code, which can be run by the computer. And so let's talk a little bit about that object code that was being added without you having to write it. Um, so those code are actually um, being injected by these two lines of code, the first two lines, which is pound sign include IO, as IO stream and the using namespace STD. Um, right now, I don't think I want you to dig too deep into this, but just understand that to make C out available, you would need these two lines of code. And then um, if you look at the program again, yes. So the code is being included in this ink main uh, parentheses and then curly brace, braces. Um, just consider this as the entry point for any program. Uh, and anything that's within the bound of this will be run by, by uh, the computer when you ask it to. And then the return zero, we will actually talk about this later when we talk about, about functions, so very quickly. So, um, so let's review this. So remember, the first two lines, it includes some, um, it includes the C out so that we can use it basically. And then this in main and the curly braces, what's within it is going to be run by the computer. So I want you to play with the syntax. So basically, if you don't type, um, if you don't have the program, exactly the syntax that the, uh, the computer can understand, it actually will freak out sometimes and then tell you that, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. So it's, it, it, it's way more pre precise than when we talk to human because we can use body language, you can be a little bit off and people still understand it, but computers are not that smart. So, uh, um, I think I have to turn off this thing because I actually take breaks. Yeah, you should have that habit too. Um, so let's do some things. Like for example, let's add some space to it and see if the program wants. Oh, yeah, it's actually still okay. And uh, let's say if I add like a line, what will happen? It still works. But what if I, you know, delete the semicolon? Yep, this is what it's supposed to do. So it actually will tell you that there's an error because it expects a semicolon in the end of this line of code. So, you know, computers don't explode, especially this is not, you know, it's just an online tool. Honestly, even if you're doing it in IDE, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't make your computer do anything or destroy itself or something. So be brave and, and try different things out. 
Um, that's how you learn. You have to make mistakes. It's like when you learn, when you were a baby, when you were learning to speak, you make a lot of mistakes, and then eventually you got it. So, so let's go back to the slides. So a violation of the syntax is called syntax error. So basically, you didn't follow the grammar rules, um, and that's the only error that we would talk about in just this module. We will talk about more later on. Uh, also, want to let you know there's um, the the differentiation of errors and warnings. So basically, if you see errors, it means your program actually cannot run. There's something that you absolutely have to fix before you can run the program. But if it's warnings, your program will run, but just the computer is like, hey, are you sure this is what you mean? Um, so that's the differentiation between them. That's, this is the end of the class, and uh, we would, well, not, it is the end of this video. So we'll see you in the next video for this module.